love your PCR product, it might be tempting to just increase the volume, say double it from 50 to 100 microliters. But really, you're better off splitting it up into multiple tubes. So go ahead and make that 100 microliter worth of reaction, but then split it into two tubes. We even more, make four and put it into four, tu four reactions worth and put it into four tubes. Then at the end, you can just combine, pull those all, combine them during your purification step. You can basically just load them all onto the same column, one after another. Um, if you have too much volume, what you can do is you can spin it, you can load it, you can spin it, you can load it. If it's not too much volume, you can just load it all together at the same time and spin it once. So why? Basically, what's gonna happen is that although you can scale up all of the ingredients, so you can double the amount of everything that you add so that the concentrations stay the same, What's not going to stay the same is the heating and the fluid dynamics in a small volume versus a large volume. If you have a larger volume, it's going to take longer for the heat to, um, for all of the areas of the tube to heat up. And they're not going to heat up like as evenly or as easily and things like this. Basically the fluid dynamics, the heating dynamics, all of this stuff is going to be different depending on the volume. When you have that larger volume and it takes it longer to heat up, well now what's going to happen is that in those PCR cycles, if you have it set to be at this temperature for say 10 seconds, first of all, is it really able to get to that temperature in 10 seconds? And second, if it does get there, it's probably not going to be there the lo as long as you 10 seconds because it took longer to heat up and then it's going to take longer to cool down so all your temperatures all your times are going to be off and the temperature throughout the tube is probably going to be different too because there's going to be less um there's like the stuff in the middle is going to be farther away from the outside of the um from like the wall and that sort of thing so basically there's just going to be really different dynamics and although the pcr machines like the more modern ones try to account for this by allowing you to put in the volume and then they will change like the ramp speed and stuff like this um it doesn't work perfectly there's all those other factors that you have to worry about and so it's really better to just split it up into multiple tubes especially if you spent a lot of time optimizing that reaction at the lower um volume so basically there are things that you could do to optimize your PCR reaction to increase your yield as well as your specificity, which I must say like specificity, I care way more about the specificity than the yield. So once I optimize that 50 microliter reaction so that it, I get one single like band on my gel and it looks nice, I don't have all these like smears, I don't have non-specific products. It might not be as bright of a band as I want, but I'll just pull multiple reactions together rather than keep trying to optimize this one at the risk of then reducing the specificity. But there are a couple things that you can do in order to try to increase the amount, increase your yield from a reaction. These include doing things like adding an additive such as um, betaine or DMSO, which will help like break up secondary structures. So if the DNA is all folded up, it's going to make it hard for the primers to find it. But DMSO can kind of go disrupt that hydrogen bonding, disrupt that base pairing, um, that sort of thing, and make it easier for the strands to come apart so that the primers can find their binding site. So things like that might be able to increase your yield a little, um, but most of the time what I do when I'm doing the troubleshooting is trying to optimize so I get better specificity. Um, and so for this, I'm doing things like trying a temperature gradient to find the, the, right, um, the right temperature where I get my product, but not a bunch of non-specific products that you can get if your temperature is too low. And so much more on that, all that stuff in other posts, but basically um, my strategy is just get it to work at the lower volume, scale up the reaction volume that I make, but then split that up into multiple tubes. If you have a lot of samples that you need to do, then what you can do is you can just make them all as a single tube. So make say 150 microliters if you want three reactions worth, make them all in a single tube and then just use a multi-channel pipette to transfer that into multiple tubes. And really the only thing that you're gonna take longer for is the pooling when you're going to do your purification. And it's a lot shorter probably and a lot less wasteful than doing all of that optimization to try to get the most, most, most out of that smaller reaction size. So that is just one tip for helping you increase your volume or your yield. Um, it might be tempting to change the amount of the things that you have in there or to change the cycle number. These are also probably not going to be good ideas. Yes, the cycle number, basically you can increase it up to about 35. 
But each cycle you go through, not only are you risking depleting the reaction components, so think about if you're running qPCR and how it plateaus at the end, at the end because you're like running out of reagents, the same thing is going to happen in your PCR reaction. Um, your normal PCR reaction, you're just not going to be able to see it. But the real risk from increased number of cycles isn't that just your reaction is going to like plateau out, it's that you're actually running the risk of increasing the number of mutations in your product. Basically, each cycle, yes, you're going to double the amount of DNA of your product as long as each of those pieces is like totally efficient. So each copy gets another copy made, exactly. But each copy that gets made also it's, has the chance to become mutated um, because these polymerases aren't perfect. So each copy you make, even if you're using a high fidelity polymerase, there's a chance that there's going to be a problem with it. And if it's a problem with one copy, say, it might not be that big of a deal. But then if you make a, another copy of that mistake copy, and then another copy of that, and then another copy of that, well, now you're propagating that mistake throughout a lot of your product. So you don't want to increase the cycle number too high. It also might be help, might be tempting to increase like your starting amounts of your template or of your primers. But both of these are bad ideas as well, because uh, um, basically what can happen is that you can get you run the risk of getting more non-specific products. So basically, if there's more stuff, if there's more sites around for the primers to go find and bind, they're gonna find them on those other sites and not just your site. Um, and so basically, if you have a lot of lot of DNA and the primer is like, oh, there's a site right there, it's not gonna, um, it's gonna increase the amount of non-specific binding and things like this. You also have problems where you, basically you're, you're changing the concentrations of things within that small volume. There's all sorts of stuff that can happen. And PCR is really like, it's a lot of changing various parameters to try to get the product that you want. Um, and once you get the product that you want, I would say just don't, don't mess with it too much further. Just increase um, the number of reactions that you do. Um, and don't worry about trying to make each smaller reaction maximally efficient. Now, sometimes you might think, okay, I need more of my PCR product because I went and I did my reaction, I did my purification and the concentration is too low. Well, if the concentration is too low, if that's your problem and not the actual amount, then what you can do is you can just elute it in a smaller volume when you go and you do your PCR purification column, just elute it in a smaller volume. And so like for things like the mini prep, it says like elute in 50 microliters. I normally just do it in 25. This will give me a higher concentration. And this is, it's better to have a higher concentration than a lower concentration because you can always dilute out the higher concentration, but you can't like, you'd have to concentrate up the, to a higher concentration and then concentrating that you'd probably lose a lot of your yield. So it's better to elute in a smaller volume. You can also potentially increase the concentration or increase the yield from that lower concentration is if you let it sit, let the liquid, let your like elution liquid, so your water, your elution buffer, let it sit on the membrane for like a minute or so, even more than that. Um, this is going to make it better, um, more efficiently like elute out. So let more DNA come off of that membrane and have less be stuck on there. So those are things that you can do to increase. Well, I guess in that case, it's the yield. Um, and then the smaller volume will give you a higher concentration and you'll get a higher yield and a higher concentration if you're pooling multiple reactions on, in together into this single column and not PCR, but if you're doing a similar type of column for like a mini prep, you can also pull react pool um like colonies onto there if you're sure that they all um like come from the same source. You you trust that they're all um like it was from a from a plasmid and not from some mutagenesis reaction or something like that. So you know that all those colonies are probably good. You can then pull them together, and you might need to spin it down first and then reload it and things like this. But that's a way that you can increase your yield and your concentration and stuff from those. So remember. Do your optimization on the smaller volume and optimize so that you get a specific band. Don't worry too much about if that band isn't very bright. If the band isn't very bright, it's not bright enough or you just, it's good, but you need a lot of it for something. Then what you can do is you can just pool reactions together. You don't have to go and pipette out each individual reaction separately. Instead, just make a larger volume worth and split it up into multiple tubes using a multi-channel pipette if you have a lot of different samples that you need to split up. Then at the end, go ahead, pull them all together, purify them together, elute in a low volume if you want a high concentration, and voila, you've got lots of your PCR products without the risk of mutation 
for the mutations that you get if you were to increase the cycle number or non-specific products if you were to increase the amount of stuff in there um and so yeah so hope that helped and i'm gonna go set up some pcr reactions i'm going to make 200 microliters worth of each of my reactions then i'm just gonna split it up into four tubes and voila i'm gonna get hopefully lots of pcr products oh and before you, you do want to make sure though that you do it at the smaller scale so that you make sure that it works for first um, and so you want to make sure you see that gel, you see the bands all good, and then if you see that the concentration is too low or you just know you're going to need a lot, then go ahead and do those multiple reactions. Now because they're all, all those tubes should be identical, especially you need to make sure that you mix well when you're making that master mix, then all those tubes should be identical so you don't need to run a gel before you pull them together, just pull out together the ones that are the same, then you can go ahead and run your gel on them to make sure that everything still looks okay. And you can even be doing, if you're pretty sure things will look okay you can be doing your pcr purification at the same time that your gel is running that's what i'm planning to do so here we go